Indication and Usage Calquins is indicated for the treatment of adult patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, or small lymphocytic lymphoma, SLL. Select safety information. Serious adverse events, including fatal events, have occurred with calquins, including serious and opportunistic infections, hemorrhage, cytopenias, second primary malignancies, cardiac arrhythmias, and hepatotoxicity, including drug-induced liver injury. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Brame, and I am a medical oncologist at UCI Health. I specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of B-cell malignancies, including chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL. I see adult patients with CLL across various ages and disease states, with the majority of them being 50 years or older. We know that CLL is a chronic disease that requires long-term management, and more long-term follow-up data can be valuable when making treatment decisions. When it comes to informing my treatment decisions, factors including long-term follow-up data, a demonstrated safety profile, dosage and administration, and the patient's other medical problems play a crucial role in deciding on an appropriate treatment for my patients. It's the data, including long-term follow-up data for CalQuince, that give me confidence in this treatment. And of course, in terms of its demonstrated safety profile, I have a high opinion of CalQuince based on both data from the clinical trials as well as my personal experience. My patients on CalQuince have done incredibly well, and many have been progression-free for several years with some side effects that can be managed. This experience has reinforced my confidence in prescribing CalQuince. Let's first look at the CalQuince data in first-line CLL. Elevate-TN was a study of patients with previously untreated CLL for which there was a 90% PFS risk reduction with calquins plus obinutuzumab versus obinutuzumab plus chlorambucil and an 80% PFS risk reduction with calquins monotherapy versus obinutuzumab plus chlorambucil at 28.3 month median follow-up. We also now have long-term follow-up data at six years. You can see here an estimated six-year PFS of 78% in the Calquins plus obinutuzumab arm and 62% in the Calquins monotherapy arm. Based on my experience, these data are consistent with what I have seen in my own patients on Calquins. I tend to prescribe BTK inhibitors in my high-risk patients with TP53 mutation or 17P deletion. Elevate-TN included both Calquins with obinutuzumab and Calquins as a monotherapy, which means that I have the option to use Calquins with or without the monoclonal antibody, depending on my patient's treatment goals. And as you can see, the rates of select cardiovascular AEs were low with Calquins, both with and without obinutuzumab, which reinforces my confidence in prescribing Calquins. From the interim analysis for the most common ARs and events of clinical interest shown here, the safety and tolerability results of Calquins at six-year follow-up were consistent. When the Elevate RR data was released, I genuinely appreciated AstraZeneca's bold decision to evaluate Calquins in a head-to-head -head trial versus a brutinib. Elevate RR is another study that helps in my treatment decision-making for patients with relapsed or refractory CLL. Elevate RR was the first phase three study of a highly selective next generation BTKI versus abrutinib and all of the patients enrolled in this study were high risk patients. As you can see in the figure, the median PFS was 38.4 months for both arms at 41 month median follow-up. Safety results seen in Elevate RR were consistent with the ASCEND study in patients with a relapsed refractory CLL. One of the reasons that I choose Calquins for my patients is because of its established cardiovascular safety profile, including the low rates of atrial fibrillation, hypertension, and grade three or higher bleeding. This data is especially important to consider when it comes to my patients with cardiovascular comorbidities. The approval of Calquins was based on two phase three studies, Elevate TN for previously untreated CLL and Ascend for relapsed refractory CLL. I touched on the Elevate TN study earlier, but ASCEND was the first phase three study of a BTKI versus IDR or BR in relapsed refractory CLL. With a follow-up of nearly four years, you can see there's an estimated PFS of 62% in the Calquence arm and 19% in the IDR BR arm. Consistent with the other studies, there were also low rates of atrial fibrillation, hypertension, and major hemorrhage. Together, the overall safety profile of Calquence 
gives me assurance when prescribing CalQuince for my patients. To learn more about CalQuince, take a moment to read through the study designs and additional clinical data, including the most common adverse events and events of clinical interest for Elevate TN, Elevate RR, and the Ascend Phase 3 studies here. With six-year median follow-up data and a demonstrated safety profile, I know what I can expect with CalQuince. Regarding dosing and administration, for my patients with difficulty swallowing, I use CalQuince because of the small tablet size and its straightforward dosing regimen. In my experience, for the majority of my patients, CalQuince is a tolerable treatment where I can help manage some of their side effects. Additionally, the MIAC, or Matched Adjusted Indirect Comparison Analysis between CalQuence and Xanabrutinib may provide some additional context that may be helpful. While a MIAC analysis has its limitations, it is an established method for indirectly comparing the relative treatment effects of different therapies. Despite the limitations of conducting these types of analyses, they do help to see the differences, as the inclusion criteria differed between the studies. By accounting for population differences between the studies, the MIAC analysis may help make informed decisions with the data currently available. Scan these QR codes to learn more. To learn more about CalQuence, scan the QR code or visit calquencehcp.com. Indication and usage. Calquence is a Bruton tyrosine kinase BTK inhibitor indicated for the treatment of adult patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, or small lymphocytic lymphoma, SLL. Important safety information about Calquence, a calibrutinib tablets. Serious and opportunistic infections. Fatal and serious infections, including opportunistic infections, have occurred in patients with hematologic malignancies treated with Calquence. Serious or grade 3 or higher infections, bacterial, viral, or fungal, occurred in 19% of 1,029 patients exposed to CalQuence in clinical trials, most often due to respiratory tract infections, 11% of all patients, including pneumonia, in 6%. These infections predominantly occurred in the absence of grade 3 or 4 neutropenia, with neutropenic infection reported in 1.9% of all patients. Opportunistic infections in recipients of CalQuence have included, but are not limited to, hepatitis B virus reactivation, fungal pneumonia, pneumocystis gyrovetsi pneumonia, Epstein-Barr virus reactivation, cytomegalovirus, and progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, PML. Consider prophylaxis in patients who are at increased risk for opportunistic infections. Monitor patients for signs and symptoms of infection and treat promptly. Hemorrhage. Fatal and serious hemorrhagic events have occurred in patients with hematologic malignancies treated with CalQuence. Major hemorrhage, serious or grade 3 or higher bleeding, or any central nervous system bleeding occurred in 3.0% of patients, with fatal hemorrhage occurring in 0.1% of 1,029 patients exposed to CalQuence in clinical trials. Bleeding events of any grade, excluding bruising and petechia, occurred in 22% of patients. Use of antithrombotic agents concomitantly with CalQuence may further increase the risk of hemorrhage. In clinical trials, major hemorrhage occurred in 2.7% of patients taking CalQuence without antithrombotic agents and 3.6% of patients taking CalQuence with antithrombotic agents. Consider the risks and benefits of antithrombotic agents when co-administered with CalQuence. Monitor patients for signs of bleeding. Consider the benefit risk of withholding CalQuence for three to seven days pre- and post-surgery depending upon the type of surgery and the risk of bleeding. Cytopenias. Grade 3 or 4 cytopenias, including neutropenia, 23%, anemia, 8%, thrombocytopenia, 7%, and lymphopenia, 7%, developed in patients with hematologic malignancies treated with CalQuence. Grade 4 neutropenia developed in 12% of patients. Monitor complete blood counts regularly during treatment. Interrupt treatment, reduce the dose, or discontinue treatment as warranted. Second primary malignancies. Second primary malignancies, including skin cancers and other solid tumors, occurred in 12% of 1,029 patients exposed to CalQuence in clinical trials. 
The most frequent second primary malignancy was skin cancer, reported in 6% of patients. Monitor patients for skin cancers and advise protection from sun exposure. Cardiac arrhythmias. Serious cardiac arrhythmias have occurred in patients treated with calquents. Grade 3 atrial fibrillation, or flutter, occurred in 1.1% 1 .1 of 1,029 patients treated with calquents, with all grades of atrial fibrillation, or flutter, reported in 4.1% of all patients. Grade 3 or higher ventricular arrhythmia events were reported in 0.9% of patients. The risk may be increased in patients with cardiac risk factors, hypertension, previous arrhythmias, and acute infection. Monitor for symptoms of arrhythmia, for example, palpitations, dizziness, syncope, dyspnea, and manage as appropriate. Hepatotoxicity, including drug-induced liver injury. Hepatotoxicity, including severe, life-threatening, and potentially fatal cases of drug-induced liver injury, DILI, has occurred in patients treated with Bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitors, including calquents. Evaluate bilirubin and transaminases at baseline and throughout treatment with calquents. For patients who develop abnormal liver tests after calquents, monitor more frequently for liver test abnormalities and clinical signs and symptoms of hepatic toxicity. If DILI is suspected, withhold calquents. Upon confirmation of DILI, discontinue calquents. Adverse reactions. The most common adverse reactions, greater than or equal to 30% of any grade in patients with CLL were anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, headache, upper respiratory tract infection, and diarrhea. Treatment emergent decreases, all grades of hemoglobin, platelets, and neutrophils were based on laboratory measurements and adverse reactions. In patients with previously untreated CLL exposed to calquents, fatal adverse reactions that occurred in the absence of disease progression and with onset within 30 days of the last study treatment were reported in 2% for each treatment arm, most often from infection. Serious adverse reactions were reported in 39% of patients in the calquents plus obinutuzumab arm and 32% in the calquents monotherapy arm, most often due to events of pneumonia. 7% and 2.8% respectively. Adverse reactions led to calquents dose reduction in 7% and 4% of patients in the calquents plus obinutuzumab arm, N equals 178, and calquents monotherapy arm, N equals 179, respectively. Adverse events led to discontinuation in 11% and 10% of patients, respectively. Increases in creatinine to 1.5 to 3 times the upper limit of normal, ULN, occurred in 3.9% and 2.8% of patients in the calquents combination arm and monotherapy arm, respectively. In patients with relapsed refractory CLL exposed to calquents, serious adverse reactions occurred in 29% of patients. Serious adverse reactions in greater than 5% of patients who received calquents included lower respiratory tract infection, 6%. Fatal adverse reactions within 30 days of the last dose of calquents occurred in 2.6% of patients, including from second primary malignancies and infection. Adverse reactions led to calquents dose reduction in 3.9% of patients, N equals 154. Dose interruptions in 34% of patients, most often due to respiratory tract infections followed by neutropenia, and discontinuation in 10% of patients, most frequently due to second primary malignancies followed by infection. Increases in creatinine to 1.5 to 3 times ULN occurred in 1.3% of patients who received calquents. Drug interactions. Strong CYP3A inhibitors. Avoid co-administration of calquents with a strong CYP3A inhibitor. If these inhibitors will be used short-term, interrupt calquents. After discontinuation of strong CYP3A inhibitor for at least 24 hours, resume previous dosage of calquents. Moderate CYP3A inhibitors. Reduce the dosage of calquents to 100 mg once daily when co-administered with a moderate CYP3A inhibitor. Strong CYP3A inducers. Avoid co-administration of calquents with a strong CYP3A inducer. If co-administration is unavoidable, increase the dosage of calquents to 200 mg approximately every 12 hours. Specific Populations Based on findings in animals, calquents may cause fetal harm and dystocia when administered to a pregnant woman. 
There are no available data in pregnant women to inform the drug-associated risk. Advise pregnant women of the potential risk to a fetus. Pregnancy testing is recommended for females of reproductive potential prior to initiating calquence therapy. Advise female patients of reproductive potential to use effective contraception during treatment with calquence and for one week following the last dose of calquence. It is not known if calquence is present in human milk. Advise lactating women not to breastfeed while taking calquence and for two weeks after the last dose. Avoid use of calquence in patients with severe hepatic impairment, child pew class C. No dosage adjustment of calquence is recommended in patients with mild, child pew class A, or moderate, child pew class B, hepatic impairment. Please see full prescribing information, including patient information.